Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're recording um, the webinar, so um, you, you should have seen a notification, so just ignore that for now. So it'll be available after the webinar. Um, so, as I say, thank you for joining us. Um, we just um, we think that the trust registration is really important because um, it's picking up more than the 2018 registration and many people with trust responsibilities will not be aware that they have to take action. Also, HMRC system can be overwhelming and um, we thought we'd run this webinar to share some facts and just let you know that we're set up to help you. So we're just going to go through um, a bit of an introduction, a recap, why HMRC have changed the reporting requirements, when we have to take action, uh, what will happen if the trust isn't registered on time, who needs to register, what if you've already, already registered back in 2018, how the process itself works. Um, one of the biggest stumbling blocks I think we'll see is whether or not the trust is closed and what action you need to take and then how Wilson Partners can help. So just a bit of an introduction on myself and Jody. So I'm Sarah Pedrotti. I'm a tax manager at Wilson Partners. I've been working at Wilson Partners since 2012 and I've been working in tax since 2002. So I'll leave you to do the maths on that one. I don't want to admit to working for that long. Um, I basically head up the private client offering at Wilson Partners and mainly oversee the self-assessment um, process at Wilson Partners, but also advisory such as capital gains tax, residence domicile issues and now trust registration. So I'm Jodie, I'm a tax manager also at Wilson Partners um, and I've been here nearly two years now. Um, my time is split between quite a wide range, so I do a lot of advisory on income and capital gains tax, trust and succession planning, um, but I also do a lot on tax due diligence projects and R&D claims. So ultimately why are we here? Why have HMRC changed the reporting requirements for trusts? So um, HMRC feel that abusers um, of the tax system have set up convoluted structures um, to create um, the ability to to evade tax basically and launder money um, both in the UK and overseas and this registration process is part of their response to the fifth money laundering directive. Um, it's also part and parcel of the fact that under the worldwide information um, sharing platform it now includes trust information and HMRC are well aware that there's a lot of information out there that they don't know about trusts in the UK. Um, they think that the risk areas are with those non-taxable trusts that they at the moment don't have a lot of information about, if any. Um, and so that's why they're requesting registration of all express trusts. So when do we need to take action? And the, the simple answer is now. Um, Non-taxable trusts in existence on or after the 6th of October 2020 must be registered by the 1st of September 2022. A trust which becomes registrable uh, from the 4th of June 2022 must instead register within 90 days of the date it becomes registrable. Either taxable or non-taxable trusts created after the 1st of September 2022 will have the 90 days to register. And then anything already registered under the 2018 system will need to re-register under the new system and confirm the details currently hold, held, sorry, and then add a little bit more information just to see to see what's out there. I think it's a bit of a fishing expedition. So what happens if you don't register the trust on time? Um, HMRC um, have fixed penalties in place that they um, originally issued through that 2018 registration process. So three months late, £100 penalty, six months late, £200 penalty, um, six months or more is a £300 or 5% of the tax due, depending on which is higher. Um, mo most of you may realise this does reflect a lot of the self-assessment um, kind of penalty regime. So consideration is being made to change those. However, we haven't got any guidance yet on speaking to the um, trust registration service um, HMRC helpline they have told us that 
if a trust does not meet the deadline, they will issue a notice to file um, almost immediately. So that leads us to believe that they do have a list of information um, at the moment on trust they're expecting to file. So um, they've got more info than we originally thought. So who needs to register? Um, and it is anyone responsible for an express trust. An express trust is essentially a trust that was intentionally created. It doesn't have to be in writing. It can be verbally, um, which again is an area where HMRC think, you know, if there's not formal documentation, are things slipping under the radar? So it's really important to know that it is both written and verbal express trusts. Um, who who needs to register and what is an express trust? Um, the net is so far reaching, it's actually easier to kind of say who doesn't need to register, um, which is essentially trust created in the course of setting up bank accounts for minors or vulnerable persons, co-ownership trusts holding joint property where the trustees and the beneficiaries are the same people, trusts holding policies that contain temporary disablement cover and trusts holding healthcare policies, pension scheme trusts, charitable trusts and trusts imposed by court order and some trusts having effect on death. I think the easiest thing to do is if you're not sure, ask a specialist, ask one of us um, and we can kind of go through the trust documents and work out exactly what we're looking at and whether or not it needs to register. So a lot of people will be asking, what if I've already registered under the 2018 system? Basically, it means that you are now required to re-register and provide some additional information. Um, the same kind of arduous process of um, setting up an online account um, to update the register is required. Um, and then going forward, all um, changes to a trust have to be reported within 90 days. And if the trust is taxable, um, an annual filing will be required to, to declare that the trust is um, information is up to date. So one of the big questions and one that I've actually dealt with in work in the last couple of weeks is what if the trust has closed? Um, and essentially, if the trust was in place on or after the 6th of October 2020, uh, it must still register regardless if it closed on the 7th of October 2020, it still needs to be registered and then immediately closed down in the trust registration system. Um, as an example, like I said, I've just dealt with one of these. Uh, so it's a historic accumulation and maintenance trust holding a life insurance policy. Um, the settlers were the, tr uh, the taxable individuals uh, and therefore the trust itself was non-taxable. It closed in 2021. Um, so looking through it, discussed it with the trustees and it still needs to register. And they were quite surprised by this. Um, and discussing it in the tax team here at Wilson Partners, we've all kind of said, I think actually it's going to be really easy to miss if a trust closed, the final returns have been done. Um, it's very easy to kind of go, well, that's that's been dealt with with HMRC. However, um, they do still want more information. So how does the registration process work under the under the new system? So each trust must create a government gateway account as an organisation. And I mean a government gateway login as an organisation for every trust that you that you hold. Um, you have to go in and claim the trust is the wording that HMRC are using. But ultimately, it means uh, attaching the trust to that um, government gateway account and then um, if you want the help of an agent, they can then go in and, and you can um, provide agent authority to then go and do all of the trust registration for yourself uh, on your behalf. Um, it's an arduous process um, and at Wilson Partners, we set up a, a simpler process of dealing with that. So um, that leads I me mean, very nicely onto the fact that how can we help you? So we can assist with the registration um, set up as agents. Um, we can assist with the ongoing maintenance of the trust and advise you on the best way forward. Um, this trust registration service is complicated. It is arduous with HMRC systems. Don't be stressed about it. We're here to help you um, come and speak to us. Exactly. So hopefully um, people can now unmute. Um, and if you've got any questions, let us know. If we can't answer them right away, we're going to do a list of questions. And when we send out the slides, we'll also send out any questions we've received and the answers. Um, we also want to take the opportunity to 
share experiences has anyone used the system yet how have they found it if they had any stumbling blocks and also how they found it back in 2018 because um, my role was a bit different then and I, I dealt with all the registrations and um, it was fun when you're talking about a 30 year old trust that the person the trustees actually had nothing to do with setting up and all of a sudden they were going well I don't know <laughs> so um, yeah it would just be interesting to see if anyone's got any questions or experiences Yep, I've got a question for you both, if that's OK. Um, what's the situation with um, overseas trusts? OK, so currently overseas trusts are not included in the trust registration service. They are only interested at the moment in UK trusts. Um, but I kind of stress at the moment because um, obviously back in 2018 it was only taxable trusts and they've now extended that um, and it also wouldn't surprise us if we saw in other countries something similar happening um, so if you've got a trust elsewhere just keep an eye out on local legislation as well and uh, reporting guidelines thanks steve has anyone else got any questions or anything to share yeah i just wanted to sort of start in on that one really um in, in respect of the overseas point it was my understanding actually that following the um the update of the fifth money laundering directive that actually overseas trusts are now caught in it if you've got an ongoing relationship uh, with a, an advisor in the uk and they've defined that as about 12 months long and also if you've got an overseas trust that's got at least one uk trustee that purchases uk real estate so i do think the overseas ones are caught slightly now but correct me if i'm wrong no i i do agree with you um i do it's, it's as with everything in tax it's a little bit more complicated than a yes or no answer um but generally speaking um they are looking at the uk trusts for this registration um there are always exceptions to those rules um and like you say there there are funnies within it and that can include things like uk trustees um so as with everything it, it it is a little bit more complicated than than they always let on originally. OK, yeah, I was going to say, because my understanding is that quite a few overseas ones have been caught now. I mean, I've done some registrations myself of overseas trusts that have been have been caught. So I just wanted to make sure that's right. How, how did you find um, the service with with capturing the overseas information? Was it fairly simple? Um, depends on the client. Um, <laughs> one that I had to register <laughs> before uh, part of a royal family of an offshore trust company. That wasn't great. Uh, that was quite hard. Um, yeah, it varies really. A lot of mine I've got offshore trust corporation clients, so they're pretty good at giving the information. But um, oh, I mean, I've been registering these um, for the firm since 2017, so I've done all of our registrations uh, pretty much. So I think I probably had a similar experience to you that I've stumbled across every problem and issue that HMRC have thrown our way um, since then. So um, yeah, it's been a bit of a learning curve and they do keep changing the process, yeah. don't they? So it's, it's, the, it's the movie of goalposts yeah, that, yeah. that, that gets us most frustrated, I think. Um, and then you think yeah. you've kind of got it nailed and then they go oh actually what about this and and then you're kind of back to square one so we feel yeah. your pain definitely yeah yeah absolutely I've, I've found it quite difficult um where you've had an overseas trustee and it won't the system just does not want to recognize an overseas address um and yeah. some of the some of the telephone calls back and forth to hmrc's helpline yeah. just to get that registered was uh, it probably took me about three hours so yeah no and i feel your pain because the other thing you've got now is they've added that extra layer of security where they want you to give <laughs> a uk telephone number so i've got my offshore trust corporation clients trying to give me authority to manage the trust on an ongoing basis they've had to ring me to give my telephone number so I can get the code to give them to authorise overseas because they haven't got a UK telephone number. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's, and I think it's it's awful. just classic HMRC not thinking through a process. Yeah, it is and, really counterintuitive. Yeah, and, and, and using the taxpayers as guinea pigs ultimately. They're finding yeah. that we're, we're finding the problems and then they're fixing it when we find it ultimately they're very reactive isn't yeah, it absolutely. yeah it's not proactive have you have you come across any um where the registrations have had to go through, so you've used all your best endeavors to find all the information for the trustees and the and the beneficiaries under the legislation um you've registered the trust to hit a deadline with incomplete information at best 
um, and then you come to claim it but you can't claim it because they ask you for information that hasn't been registered and then it gets stuck in a glitch. Yes, I had I had, I had had a similar version of this last year. You do. And, um, it, it was arduous. Um, it, uh, it was slightly different in that it, it, I was dealing with people in the UK, so it did make it a little bit easier. Um, it was a back and forth on the on the trust helpline um and actually what what ended up happening is after about four or five calls getting misinformation from the hmrc help desk mm. i spoke to someone who knew what they were doing and was able to just go in update something and make sure that that was the question i got asked when i then went to to claim yeah. it that's where i'm at at the moment yeah. actually i've managed to get through to a, a head of trust team and head, yeah I think yeah. he's going to be pretty good. I mean, I won't name names, but I think he's going to be <laughs> out for me. But I mean, I've got his direct number now, and I think that's going to be golden, to be honest. Um, it's really yeah. about I, who you I, can I have the name and number of someone, and I wonder if it's the same person. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> you it with your life. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Bless him. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds like we've had pretty um, similar experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for your input. And like, like I said, it's it's a, a really tricky area to kind of navigate, just because, as you say, H must keep moving the goalposts. Um, there's a lot of information that's not directly published, so you have to go right into the inner workings, or you don't find out about it until it's staring in your fa in the face, and you go, well, what, what, where do I go from here? So um, yeah, we really appreciate that. Kind of, you're going through through the same. Um, someone's just popped their hand up. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Uh, oh, hello. Hello. It's Far me. away. Sorry, I I am literally late to joining this because we were trying to find trust registration details. Uh, anyway, <laughs> got carried away with that. Uh, my question to you is: How are you billing your clients in respect of all this? What I call stupid time that's just being wasted. Because it doesn't feel like I'm providing a service to the client. I just feel like I'm doing HMRC's work for them. Yeah, I I, I completely agree. Um, I've I've tested. I mean, um, um, I've been pretty much the one testing it out um, with some of the trusts um, that we're able to do on, and we've we've basically settled on um, an idea of fees. Um, to keep it as minimal as possible that it there is a, there is if if the if the the trust hasn't been registered before there yeah. is you have to go and put in that information you have to put the trustees and you have to put yeah. all the benefit you know it and it and it is d data processing for hmrc ultimately yeah and if clients want us to do it for them i think we, we have to charge for it it's a requirement out there by hmrc um you have to do it um yeah. and if and if the trust themselves aren't able if the trustees themselves aren't able to go and do that themselves i think our experience and our knowledge on that is, is what ultimately they're paying for so um yeah. part of that is going to be data processing i absolutely appreciate that but part of it down the line will be knowing what to put in how to put it in yeah. uh, and, and all that kind of stuff as well so we we are gonna we are charging our clients to do it and i think okay. We're, we're trying to take it as an opportunity to dig a little bit deeper as well and strengthen our relationships with clients um, just because it, it does have to open up this really deep level of conversation. Um, and as I said, there's there's a lot of trust that you'll deal with the trustees that are second, third generation yeah. um, to the original settlers um, and their information on the trust isn't, isn't necessarily where it needs to be so we're, we're trying to take it as an opportunity to work with them um and help them understand that it's not asking us asking them to do it we're here to help yeah. um, essentially it's, it is something that needs doing just like a return if it's due um but there has been a a few clients kind of going well, why why do i need to do this um so it's taking the time to kind of yeah. help them understand i guess but yeah, yeah. it's frustrating. frustrating yeah Sorry, my other question is one of the biggest difficulties is actually storing all of this information in one place in order to be able to access it easily again. Uh, my head is also saying I'm surprised no software providers have actually kind of wanted to jump in on this and create something 
in order to be able to file it online with HMRC's trust register. Yeah, yeah, Agreed. absolutely. <laughs> A anyone who's on this webinar who's very good at IT, start thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, thank you so <laughs> yeah we um, talk about it regularly, don't we? How yeah. we're going to store it um, and how we can get the, the clients yeah. involved in some of the data processing. Sarah's very good at creating our processes um, and these fancy forms that I have no <laughs> idea how she makes them and they're brilliant. Um, yeah. So they're, they're in progress that we can kind of send out to the clients and they can give us information back, which is a really good starting point for a meeting mm. and having that kind of base knowledge. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a work in progress with how it's going to be stored. We're completely paperless here, which mm. I think makes it easier. Personally, for me, it makes it easier. Um, so we've got we yeah, bar central records. database, um, but it's like you say, it's how it's maintaining those records. Yeah. Um, and again, with HMRC, why why that record's not accessible? Just like when you're doing kind of ERS returns, EMI notifications, there is no log that you can access, um, which is just silly because it must it must exist because <laughs> they must have it. <laughs> Actually, just following up on that, because I, I always thought it would be, you know, like with when you've got your self assessment trustee agent return and you can kind of have a look at all your clients wouldn't it be good if you had a portal that you could go in and look at all the yes. registrations you've done oh yes. we can dream <laughs> <laughs> it's this is when when you when you uh, as an as an agent i'm sure you guys have experience with it, it it's the same part of the system that mtd the, the vat side of it's on yeah the property um, the CGT for property and mm -hmm. and you have to you can't go in and say okay I'm registered for all these clients let me have a look at it it yeah. literally will ask you for their reference to then go in so it leaves you blind in that respect you you know I, I'm, I'm a I'm a processes person. I, I yeah, it would just be. So good. I've got spreadsheets with things like that on. Oh, do I? Yeah, my I <laughs> yeah I I mocked for my spreadsheets, but they come in useful. Um, yeah, I do think it would just be good if they had. It's really so you can log in every year and just see oh which ones do you need to delete or something that you've forgotten about or or whatever it may be. But I think really that that would be ultimately the best thing if they could just implement a way of seeing all the ones that you've registered, even if you don't have access to them. There's no, there's no reason that we can't um, kind of give some feedback. I mean, I don't know how far it will go with HMRC, admittedly, but we can certainly say that we've done this. We've had a discussion with other professionals um, and and see. Yeah and see if it gets, you know, if, if a few of us do it or other people have already done it, then they, they might listen. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I'm happy to, to get involved for, you know, uh, from our firm if need be. Yeah, yeah. that's really yeah. useful to know. Thank you. I think, I think, I mean, from, from my perspective going forward, certainly those ones that are taxable and will require some kind of annual filing to confirm that the reg, you know, the registration is up to date. Um, we're going to just, uh, it's going to have to be, uh, you know, jobs set up through our practice management system so that it, tr it triggers something because, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it, it's there is you can't like you say you can't just go on to HMRC online and go okay these are the clients we filed for last year yeah you know, who who do we need to look at this year it's yeah it's very frustrating mm -hmm. I just find it so bad with um ones that you do the annual returns for because you're prompted by box 20.1 on the return itself and at that point you just go and update it the ones I'm more concerned about are the express trust registrations that you may have registered and have a client that you know is around but actually in two years time they wind up the trust and then you've got to remember to delete the thing that's the problem isn't yeah. it yeah absolutely yeah. yeah i think there will be penalty issues going forwards with things like this um with them kind of popping up and um yeah. it's going to be something we have to deal with as 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 and when it comes yeah. um, till they can help us um to to do yeah. this um unfortunately there will be times where clients don't notify us of something um and un unfortunately there's there's very little we can do about it other than raise awareness like we're trying to um regular communications with our clients and and you know keeping a really good bond but you can only do that as far as the client wants you to um so it's it's yeah. tough yeah it is tricky especially when you've got a sort of ad hoc registrations that people have just instructed you to do the registration and then they walk away that's where it's really tricky absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely yeah 
Any other questions? I'm just very relieved that I'm not the only one going through this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think actually uh, there's lots of people sitting either at home or in offices uh, around there just tearing their hair out with yeah. it. You know, the process, the HMRC online, um, you know, login, yeah, e e every part of it, getting the information from the client, making sure it's the most up to date information. Um, it's just it's just fraught with 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 areas where errors can areas where errors can occur. So. Um, yeah. We're all we're all in it together. I think that's, that's the key <laughs> bit out today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I really hope everyone's found it yeah. useful. Um, and I think as much as kind of getting the information out there, having this opportunity to share experiences, I think it's been really valuable for me, and I hope it has been for everyone else. Um, so we will get notes out, um, and we will kind of do a summary of of the questions that have been asked, um, and we'll get that out to everyone that's joined. Um, and if anyone's got anything they want to ask us going forward or need any assistance or, you know, anything, Sarah and I are available, as are the rest of the tax team. 